Now, I just want to talk about healing. It's sort of hard to do it quickly, but I'm going to try again. Uh, and I wouldn't use it as a formal title for me. I, it's not something that I've pursued to the degree of feeling that I'm an expert. Certainly not. However, in my life, have I met people that have uh, had attachments that they wanted help with? Yes. Um, for whatever reason, people naturally also came up to me and was like, will you be my sitter? Meaning that they're on a psychedelic usually, that they're not sure how they're going to react and they want someone around it. And I was the one that trusted for this. That's mm -hmm. an honor. Yes. Yes, I'll do that for you. That's an honor. No problem. And have I been able to get people through or if they didn't want to go into it away from those dark places during those times? Yes. And have I been able to do that when they're sober? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I've done actually a bit of healing work for people from past life regressions to um, dealing with their issues. Um, but I, it's it's so draining for me. I don't really volunteer it. It's it's when I'm directly asked, um, and don't even bother to ask now because no fuck yourself's gonna be fake and it's just fuck it. So. Why I said beware of psychologists is because they're really only coming, now I'm generalizing here, but the majority are really only coming from one facet of healing, which is limited. They're coming from, let's be real, a science that was developed in the 1930s. That's relatively new. Shamanism is ancient. Where do you guys think that the warriors went after battle and they were traumatized? The shaman, you guys very important person to have in your tribe. Mm -hmm. That's not my role this life, but uh, it's something I'm, I've done many lives and also have been practicing Jungian techniques since I was five, okay? And got more advanced later. So I don't, so just to speak to you in a Jungian way, I had a dream that you asked that Joe went to press about the Charlie. What is that? This is just an example. But you need to understand that as a healer, I don't, I let you talk. I don't think there is one way for people to heal. I think it's up to them to define how they want to do that. So for example, you might feel comfortable using psychological terms. In the case of what is it, Charlie, it would be an attachment to addiction, a need for power through chaos, and self-sabotage, ultimately. It means that the person is not right-sized, that they need, this, now I'm going into 12-step terms, you gotta keep up with me as a healer, because I'll, I'll I'm gonna show you how inclusive I am. Now to go into the sociological, this person is not right-sized, they, um, They feel the need to embrace this dark side of them, which is not really them, but it is because it becomes them when they are so attached. It's something inherited usually through family, through family. You could say it's a transference through a family member. You could put it that way. Or you could say it's it's baggage, man. It's, it's being a product of your upbringing of your parents and usually your parents or your environment or whatever what you didn't have normally, a comparison that you made, an insecurity, usually. Usually it comes from a place of intense insecurity that needs, well, let's go into the psychological, addiction to fill that void. Yeah, I recognized it. I recognized that he liked his quote unquote Charlie, and that's a problem. He's sporting it on his hand, you guys. I'm not saying I don't like the tattoo aesthetic. I'm not saying that, I'm saying I do think that, I'm just using him as an example for why you would have asked this question. What, what am I saying here? Because you probably abstracted it into bullshit. This person is, is a duality. That is actually his nature. And he never wants to be squeaky clean. I don't want that for him either. Because he's afraid of what he'll lose, of what he won't, of 
being trapped, of not having the freedom to do whatever he wants, of not being able to use excuses. There's a youngness. There's an immaturity. There's he doesn't want. He wants to be free. He doesn't want to own his stuff fully. He does. He has a willingness. It's his prerogative to be 26. It's his prerogative. However, if he's not careful, and I'm just bringing him up because I think you guys want to know, to not always remain in that state. And for someone like him, there is a chance that he will never really grow up. And he needs to be aware of it. So what is a Charlie? It's that. You could say spirit of addiction, but it's not just addiction, it's self-sabotage and it's chaos. It's, it's um, adhering to chaos. You could use that term. You know, when I say Charlie, where, where does that come from? That's a witch term. That's used in the witch community, at least the one, the circle set. I was in the understood this. It probably translates to other things in different circles because there's no one way to do this. So other people would say, oh, it's an entity. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not putting it in those terms. It's an entity that's attached to you. Could be. I think regardless of if it's something outside yourself or a psychology that's been within yourself or a sociological reason that you have this, I think the more important thing is that A, it's an energy and B, it's a, um, you are attached to it regardless if it's within you or without you. And that's the problem. So I'm not such a limited healer that I will say anyone, that anything is any one way. Um, it's not my job to use terms that don't work for you. If you want to talk about things, and I'm not a psychologist, nor do I like to, when people have asked me to do this or asked me to listen or ask for advice or asked me to play this role, I've done it. But it's not necessarily pleasurable for me it's actually very draining for me but i do it because i care if asked so if you want to talk about your things as well whatever my father left and it hurt and i felt small fine if you want to talk about a point blank like that fine but i've also done healings where i've asked people like for example someone i knew his mom had died of cancer and it really affected him and it was his contention that the spirit, or at least fear of cancer, had transferred, transference through death, when she died. And that that had some sort of morphic resonance that was stuck to him. So we went into it. And it didn't feel appropriate to use terms like, well, did it make you sad? It wasn't going anywhere. So instead I said, when you picture the cancer, what color is it? What's texture? What temperature? what things like this and why would I go so esoterically because um, on one hand distance I think sometimes people need that distance and on the other hand it's an egoic trick to where when you're defining it like this it's actually getting in like this to say it's red and it's hot or it's cold and it's blue and to go into this weird place you're not egoically combating or rationalizing anything. We've gone to the art world practically, to the spiritual world, to where you won't, your ego won't know how to combat what it does. You love your pain body. You love it. And if if I had used terms with that guy, did it make you sad when your mom died? That's too easy for your ego to hide. Yes, and not really get in there. So. You know, I'm an interesting healer, then that's going into the shamanic. Um, but I'll throw in sociological stuff too. I'll be like, go talk to a group. You'll find out, you know, there's more people that relate to you than like 12 steps. But 12 steps, you're like, but well, that's a group. And you said you didn't do groups. Yeah, but they couldn't talk unless they had your permission. So I liked it. I was like, that's fine. If they have no agenda, which they shouldn't, but watch out because the Illuminati will use your information. Fact. From 12 steps. Fact. Um, then the, it's just a soundboard and you get to hear other people's stuff and I think the hearing other people's stuff is, is really important um, but so what is it Charlie? Oh, it's however you guys want to define it I could use any term to just and it to me I'm not attached it's not about me it's a, I don't know Charlie so it's not about me it's about how the person understands it I don't care what terms you use I don't care how you conceptualize. The important part is that you do. 
could have just asked the question, what did I mean by Charlie, but no, <laughs> right? This is just an example of healing. I've done many healings. Oh, or, for example, past lives. I don't know if this tape's coming up, but past lives. Why is this? This is, could also be an egoic trick. Now, be careful. Don't. You always say, I remember falsely. No, I, I mean, I really do remember. I mean, I could tell you things that are very specific to certain lives that you're like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, bitch, I told you. But why does it not matter if it's real or not, ultimately? Because it doesn't. Because if you're telling a story, which it is, it's a memory or a story, anything's a story. I could tell you something that happened in this life and it's still just a story. It, it, you know, it happened, sure, but it's now just a story. It's the past. Anything from the past is just a story now. So, why does it not matter if it's real? Because it doesn't. If it's what you wanted to speak on, then everything's just a metaphor anyway. And if it has resonance within your soul, then go into why it has resonance. Probably there's key themes. You know, I had a life where, actually with Abe, where a wave came and took out him and my baby. And I was, and I always lived at that same spot and I was stuck in this sadness. No, did that happen? Yeah, it did. I remember it, it emotes very strongly with me. But, because I had it all. <laughs> and then, Ron and I loved the ocean. It just hurt that that thing that I loved could separate us like it always does. The ocean always separates us. But why does it matter if that's real or not? It doesn't. The fact is, it, it's just another way to conceptualize what? Key themes. Sadness. Pain lost things that are still relative today so it's just another way to process the same things you guys and you want to trip up on semantics well you would you're shallow psychologists and most of you aren't even that